I want to talk a little bit about the power to purify and how that, again, is a gift through menstruation, through the process of menstruation. We see it physically happening in women to prepare for physical life. We purify the uterine walls monthly. But what's happening energetically uh, is that we're purifying negative energy, not just in ourselves, but negative energy from other people and from the community and even from the earth. So I'll read a little bit about the uterus and the power of purifying in terms of menstruation. When you have the capacity, you can take advantage. Oh, let me, let me back up for a sec. So this capacity to purify, once we understand that we are not just physically purifying for the physical life uh, to become pregnant, and once we understand that there's a spiritual component to this purification, we can take that power through, con through our consciousness, through our intention, and allow it to function in a bigger context to purify the energy of those around us or our own negativity. And this is Dr. Sun on that, on that power. When you have the capacity, you can take advantage and go where healing is needed and use your own body to clean your environment through your system. If the woman is healthy and has the strength, of course she can do that. It depends on where she is developmentally. Women can be in pain during their period, taking in emotional energy or toxins from the environment, and it can be unhelpful. It can make a woman sick or unbalanced. It is when she is conscious of what she is doing that she can really serve and live her power. Sacrifice is tricky. If you sacrifice yourself unconsciously, then you are just a victim. But if you are conscious, if you are aware and choose to take in these negative energies in service, this is very, very powerful. So what he is saying is that there is the capacity for women, especially together, to consciously become aware that we can actually purify toxins in the environment, emotional, physical, and spiritual. Um, now he's worked with a lot of women in Qigong practice, and he notices that if a woman is having very strong uh, menstrual cramps or pain or dis emotional discomfort, he will ask, for example, what's happening in your family, what's happening at home, and often there's the response, well, my, mo my mother's having a difficult time, or I got in a fight with my husband, or you know, we have to move, or there's things happening at work. Um, and so what he does is he helps women understand that this is just happening naturally, and if the women can become more conscious then they stop being in so much pain because the victim element is gone. The more conscious you are of how your spiritual body functions, the more powerful it becomes and the more it serves the whole, which includes you. Now, I want to read a dream that um, a woman shared. about this power. I enter a dark room or a cave and there are women in an informal circle. I feel like I'm a guest here, entering some kind of sacred space, and I feel very alert and respectful. They seem to be like witches, dressed in dark or ceremonial clothes, their faces mostly hidden in this darkness. Most of the women are standing up, but there is a woman who is reclined and withdrawn on a ledge inside the cave area. It is as though she is not well. One of the standing women explains to me that this woman attracts negative energy and thoughts to her, and then her body purifies them. I feel moved by this information and want to say something. I feel like this is impressive and also somewhat dire, since this woman seems weakened or unwell. I say something awkward like, this is so impressive. And the woman standing there looks at me a bit scornfully and says, no, it is just what happens naturally. She has no choice. 
I stand a bit confused, but then understand that this is a simple, natural function. Then the woman says to me, and of course, it is our job to purify her. And so there's this sense that the women together in this cave work to support what's happening with this one woman who is being used in this way, in this very natural function. And so I don't know how true this is. Dr. Sun talks a lot about the uterus and the breasts working together, that the uterus takes energy in and the breasts emit energy outward and nourish life. And, you know, and I just think it's for everybody to really explore what this is about in their own lives, but to at least consider in these experiences that are so shrouded with a kind of shame or privacy that there is a spiritual element happening here. And not just a spiritual element in the individual, but in the way that we serve the community. So I want to I want to move on to um, the capacity of women to give birth, which is explored in the chapter on working with creative space. Um, well, actually, it's the last two chapters: working with creative space and recognizing the sacredness of life. So Llewellyn and this is the quote, this is the example I started with, with the substance in women's chakras. Llewellyn talks quite a bit about this substance and about how it's active in giving birth. And he talks about the purpose beyond the actual birth process. Um, and so he describes a reality where women in the past used to know how this substance in their chakras brought light into life. So it can receive, it can be part of receiving a soul into the physical body, but it can be used to absorb spiritual light from the inner planes and transmit it into the physical world to nourish and activate and ignite the sacred element uh, within life, the sacred energy within life. Um, and he, in his point of view, and I think that there are two threads running through the book, one of them is that in order to activate these powers, the most important thing is to know that they're there and to trust how natural they are. So there isn't necessarily anything fancy that has to be done, but just an honoring of this aspect of women's being and this aspect of women's nature is enough, really. Um, I want to read a quote from Llewellyn Von Lee about how this works and about its relevance today. Men have made a real mess of the world. We've treated the world so badly that we've actually damaged the light cells of the earth. People see ecological devastation, but most people can't see the spiritual desecration that has been done. It's horrible like the pristine Mount Everest littered with trash. In the inner worlds, temples have been totally destroyed. The light in the inner worlds is receding, becoming less accessible. A certain spiritual work needs to be done by women because women are the matrix of creation. They carry the spiritual seeds of creation. A higher energy can come down through a, women, a woman's spiritual vehicles into her body and through her body into the physical body of the world. When it comes into the world, it brings with it a sacred substance that a woman has, which is always pure. The world is dying because of the lack of a spirit, certain spiritual nourishment. It is a beautiful substance that can be given back to life. It is actually like liquid gold. You could say it is the light of God made manifest in the world, and every woman carries it in the light cells of her body. If she honors it, then that substance begins to flow back into life, healing the damage that has been done to the spiritual body of the world. The human being is very powerful. A human being can be like a catalyst, 
helping change come about at an accelerated rate. In this case, women can help change something much more quickly than if it is left to its natural cycle. If women don't give themselves to this process, the world could regress. Then the magic in the world would not be accessible to humanity. The wisdom, the light in the world would not be accessible. Through the spiritual work of women, what could take a thousand years if allowed to happen naturally could take two, 30, or 40 years. <laughs>